Today's tutorial will be showing you how to break apart an image or text in Resolve 17 Fusion. And the effect will look like this. Basically take any image and you can break it apart into sections and have it rotate and tumble and go off screen. Okay, so we're going to start it off with a image here. Again, this could be a text plus node or any kind of image or even a video if you want. So the first thing we need to do is to make multiple copies of this image so that when we create masks, which is the main technique here, we'll be able to move them separately with transforms to get them to move uh, in their own different way. So we're going to do that by using different brightness contrast nodes. So we'll drag a few down here. So I'm going to break up into four different pieces. So we'll start off with four different brightness contrast nodes. And each one of these, you want to make sure that the alpha is selected and that gain is turned down. So we go to each one of these and do that. And this allows you to connect a mask to the node and you'll be able to see the effects of that mask. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. So we're going to pipe in our image into the input of each one of these nodes. And if I put that into the second viewer here by hitting the two key on my keyboard, see that nothing is shown right now. That's because I haven't attached a mask to it yet. So we'll just feed this into each one. And you can just do that by clicking, left clicking and dragging from the output of your picture, bringing that into each of your brightness and contrast nodes. Make a little bit of room here, so I'll box select all these nodes and bring down a little bit, give a little bit of room. So now we'll basically be creating our masks. So I'm going to come up here, the polygon node, and I'm going to drag that down. Now you don't have to actually connect it to anything to work with it. You'll see the toolbar up top here on both viewers has all the different tools we need to create our polygon. So we're going to be cutting this image into four different pieces. It's so going to do it roughly the same size, so I'm going to kind of quarter it. So for this first one, I'm going to do the upper left corner. So to draw the mask, you make sure that your click append is selected and you have your crosshairs. So now I'm just going to start kind of towards the middle and above the image so that I get the whole image. Now I'll left click a point there. Then I'll come over to the side here, do the same thing. Come down about halfway down the side. Come to the middle. Left click here. And then to finish it off, get your click on this original point, or you come up here to where it says close the polyline, click on that, and that created the mask. So we're going to be doing this all on the original picture first, so we can make sure that we get it all included. So all you have to do is click on the polygon again. We'll be adding another one, and we're going to just have it connected right after. So click on that. So we have a second polygon. So I'll box select both of them. So now we can see the original outline of the first one. Then I'll left click on the, the second polygon. That allows me to draw the new one. So I'm going to do the bottom left now. And we kind of have it overlap slightly so that we get the full image. So I'll just start a little above and click, come over and go a little bit past it. Come back down just outside the picture over to the side, and then again, hit the close polyline. That finishes that off. Then you can mess with this and do it however you want. I'm just doing this so it's quick and easy. And uh, you could do jagged shapes if you want. But now again, gonna come down to the polygon, click on this one, hit the polygon again, that'll add a third one. Box select them all so I can see the previous two. Left click on the third one and draw my next one here. Again, over, or overlap a little bit, click there, left click here, about halfway down, just a little bit over here, and then finish it off, and do a fourth one here. Again, box select them all, left click the last one, I'm probably going to do this last one. Now the entire image is selected. 
Now you can be more precise again, you get them right up so that you're not overlapping, that they're exactly perfect. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna have them overlap. Kind of depends on what you're comfortable with and how much time you wanna spend on it. But now we have our four different polylines, but now we can separate them and connect them to each of the brightness contrasts. So I'll just kind of separate them out here a little bit more. so a little easier to see. So to separate them, you just hold down the shift key while clicking and dragging on the polygon and that separates it from the other ones. So then I'll do this second one here, separate it. Okay, so now we have four different ones. So I'll line them up with their brightness and contrasts. And then you just left click and drag out the output. Do that with each one of these. And you want to go into each one of the polygons and click invert. And that gives you just the piece. So you go to this polygon, invert, this polygon, invert, the last one, invert. So it gives you the four pieces. Now we're going to want to connect them all together. And we're going to do that with merge nodes. So now I'll just select them all, box select, by left clicking and dragging, move them up, kind of a little more, get a little more room here. I'm going to add the merge nodes here. So that's right over here. So you need the first one. So you're going to have this one, brightness contrast into the background. This brightness and contrast. Okay, move it over here a little while away to the foreground. I'm going to create another merge. Drag that down. Now the output of this merge goes into the background. And you bring this one down into the foreground. And then one more merge here. Again, the output of this previous merge goes into the background. This goes into the foreground. So if we click on the merge five, this last merge, hit two on the keyboard to put it into the second viewer, we'll see the completed image. So now pretty much all it's left to do is to put in the transform nodes so we move each of the individual pieces. So after each bright and brightness and contrast, we need to transform. So you just click on each one, go to transform, kind of move it over here. It's contrast, transform, brightness, contrast, transform. And then the last one here, hit the transform. So now if I move this out of the way, See, it's just moving that one piece. Set that back to default. And then at this time, if you want, we'll basically do the animation. So we'll go to make sure that the playhead is back at zero. Because we want to start it with the get together. So we want to go into each of the transforms and make sure that the center keyframing is enabled and also the angle and do that with each of the transforms Come over here for the center and for the angle. Last transform here, center and angle. So right now at the first, so if we come towards the end here, now we're going to be doing the movement. So we start off with the upper left corner, which is this transform. Now one thing, each transform is going to be centered. So if you do anything with the angle, so if I change the angle now, you see it's going to pivot from this point. So you could do that if you want, but there's one other thing you could do because you could change the pivot point, which is the basically the center of the transform where it's going to be rotating from or where it's going to be size or any of these different parameters change. So you can move the pivot point over to the side. You could also move it up. So you can see it moving here. It's another little X. So now if I rotate it, it's more towards the center. And again, you kind of tweak that as you like. But for right now, I'm just going to keep it there. So I'm going to do the angle first so I can see how much it's going to be twisting. And again, it's going to start off straight and then it's going to twist 
until this last keyframe here. And to have it go off screen, I'm just going to use my uh, scroll wheel and zoom out here so I can see where I'm going to be dragging it to. And you can just take the center here, center point of your transform. Make sure the first transform is still selected. And move that down. And you can see that creates a path. It moves it out of the way. So you just keep on stretching it till it's off the screen. You can also put it off to the side a little bit. So now I can do that to each of the different transforms. So I'll go to the second one. Check its angle. So I move the pivot point again. This time I will move it down and to the left. So I can move the pivot to the left again. Then move it down or towards the center. You can see it right here. So then I'm going to do the angle again. This time maybe I'll do this way. And I'll take the center of the transform, move it down and off screen. Do the same thing with the third transform. Now this one's the upper right here. So I'm going to make the pivot to the right and up. Change the angle, go negative again here. Then move with the center down, off to the screen. And finally do the last transform. Change the pivot to the right. Change the pivot down. Change the angle. And have it go off screen. So I can go back to the beginning. And if I play this through, do they all break off and go off screen? So all I have to do is connect it to this final merge, and then I will go off to the edit page and I can play it through. And if I actually flip over to the edit page and go to the beginning, you see it play my original footage. Now you could create, I use an adjustment clip for this. So you could put the fusion composition inside of adjustment clip. You could use a fusion composition itself. You could put that within the footage. That doesn't really matter. Just once you're in fusion, follow these steps and you'll be able to create it. Now, again, you could do this with a Tix plus node and do the cutout. You could do jagged shapes. You could do a whole lot more, but it's all the same technique. So hopefully you found this video useful and I thank you for watching.